Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and happy sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. So our readings this week really emphasize Jesus, the divine physician, Jesus, the divine healer. Our first reading from the Old Testament, the book of Leviticus, speaks about what the Israelites were to do, the legal norms they were to follow if someone contracted the disease of leprosy. And so we read about how the leper had to separate himself or herself from the rest of the community so as to not transmit the disease. They had to yell out if anyone would come close to them, you know, unclean to let everyone know that they were in fact unclean. More than that, if someone were to actually come in contact with someone with leprosy, that person too would be made unclean, would have to follow the same sort of rules and procedures. So this is why it's significant in our gospel today that Jesus reaches out and he touches a leper. This is what we read in the gospel from St. Mark. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I will it, be made clean. And so Jesus, kind of putting himself in danger, taking a risk, he reaches out, he touches the leper. You know, many people would have said, what are you doing? You know, you're now unclean and... But it's important. Jesus isn't thinking about it in that way. Jesus isn't thinking about himself at all. He's thinking about this man. There's a need here that needs to be met. Jesus can meet that need. And so Jesus heals him. Jesus reaches out. He touches him. It's a personal encounter with this man who then receives new life, new healing. He's healed of his leprosy. He's brought back in to communion with the rest of the Israelites. And what's inter an interesting little detail, it's, it's funny because Jesus heals this man and then the man goes into society and is now proclaiming everything that Jesus has done. And now it's Jesus who has to retreat, so to speak, or make his abode on the outskirts, outside of society. And so <clears throat> that's the way Jesus is. Jesus sacrifices himself out of love for us. He empties himself for us. We see that clearly in this case with the, with the leper. Now, it's also true that this weekend we're celebrating World Marriage Day. And so in a beautiful way, this is very providential because husbands and wives are meant to love each other with this kind of self-sacrificing, not counting the cost sort of love. Just like Jesus with the leper, now husbands and wives they love each other in this way. They imitate God's self-emptying, God's self-gifts, off God's sacrifice out of love for the world. And when we go back to their wedding vows, husbands and wives declaring before God and all those presents, pr pr proclaiming to each other, you know, they say, I'm going to be faithful to you. I'm going to love you, not just when we're rich, but also when we're poor, not just when we're healthy, but even when we're sick, not just in good times, but also in bad times. So the point is, I am here to love you at all times. Even when if it's even when it's difficult to do so, this is the sort of commitment, this is the sort of love that I'm entering into in, into with you, right? Once again, mirroring that love of Jesus. Uh just given our our times right now, the pandemic, I think couples are really experiencing that sacrificial dimension of love. Marriages are struggling. And it's not easy to love one spouse. And, you know, the, the difficulty could be, you know, surrounding various areas of life. On the one hand, it could be economic, right? Maybe unemployment or something has hit hit your household or your home. That, that's, a, that's a big challenge, big strain on a marriage. Maybe the, 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 the pandemic, the, the virus itself has, you know, made a loved one ill. Maybe you, your spouse is sick or maybe a parent or a, a, one of your sons or daughters is sick. You know, once again, lots of stress, lots of strain on marriages. Or maybe just, you know, the repercussions that the pandemic have, has had on society in general is just making life really difficult. There's a lot of strain. So, uh, you know, marriages are struggling. Husbands and wives, you're struggling. I know. I hear about it. As a priest, I get phone calls. Father, and, and, and you know, the, sto the stories. And it's tragic. So on the one hand today, yes, husbands and wives are called to love with that self-emptying, that total gift of self for the other, not counting the cost. But... In your marriages, husbands and wives, when you're struggling, when you're having difficulties, you are to reach out to Jesus. Just like the leper calls upon the Lord, it's you who need to call upon the Lord. And, and just like Jesus reaches out to touch the leper to heal him, Jesus wants to do the exact same thing with you 
in your marriage. And so today it's an invitation to put Jesus back at the center of your relationship, back at the center of your marriage. And I have three ideas, three ways that you could do that. So the first is prayer. Prayer is important. Prayer is to be at the foundation of a healthy culture of marriage and the family. And so husbands and wives, you should pray for each other. Do you pray for your spouse? Think about it. Whether you pray together as husband and wife or whether you pray on your own, you should be bringing your spouse to prayer. Now, this is also something all of us can do. You don't need to be necessarily married in order to do this. All of us need to pray for marriages, for relationships. They're struggling and we need to support them with our prayers. Each one of us can do that. Once again, prayer has to be at the foundation of a healthy culture of marriage and the family. So the first thing, prayer. Second thing is this. We need to reclaim the Sabbath day. Now, the essential and most important way that we keep holy the Sabbath is by going to Mass, right? So Mass, attendance, etc. I know in this time of COVID, maybe Mass isn't available. All right, you tune in online. Basically, the point is Mass, the Eucharist, this has to be at the center of the Sabbath. But keeping holy the Sabbath has to overflow from the Holy Mass. And there's various ways that you can be intentional when it comes to spending time with your spouse or with your, you know, other members of your family, you know, as, as, with your family. And so here's some ideas. For example, get outside, enjoy nature. Some of us use the excuse, well, it's not safe, the pandemic. I mean, okay, there's probably unsafe ways to go outside, but there are definitely safe ways to go outside. And maybe we need to be a little creative, but it can be so renewing to reconnect with nature, especially with the family. Go out for a walk. You know, go to a beautiful place. Allow that to kind of rehabilitate, to recreate you in a sense and draw you back into communion with each other and the Lord. Another idea is family meal. Some people do it like a brunch. Some people do dinner. It's important to have those sacred meals as a family, so to speak, right? The, the altar of mass now comes, you know, to your home, the table at home. And so anyway, take advantage of it. It's really easy to, okay, here we are sitting around the table, but no one's really engaged. No one's really listening to each other. No one's really talking about anything of substance. We're just kind of, you know, engaging in this necessary necessary evil, so to speak. You know, we've got our phones out, etc. So if you're going to have this meal, let's be intentional about it. Don't, don't use your phones, right? Have a little rule. No one can talk on, you know, do phone stuff while we're at this meal. Maybe you need to do a little homework, right? Think about what can I bring to the conversation today? Instead of going negative and talking about the news and just bringing the, the conversation down, now I'm going to bring something positive, something enriching that's going to help uplift my children, my spouse, etc. You know what I mean? So you might have to think a little ahead, but it'll be totally worth it and it'll be really enriching and nourishing. So the whole idea here is how to live the Sabbath in, in an intentional way with your family so that you're drawn into the Lord and you're drawn into deeper communion with each other. Have a game night. I don't know. Anyway, there's lots of ideas. Be creative. The last thing is this. Families, reach out to other families. <laughs> you know others who are struggling, husbands and wives. Maybe you know a couple that's having a difficult time. Reach out to them. Talk to them. See what's going on. Maybe you go to Mass on Sunday. You see there's this couple. They used to be there. They're no longer there. Do what you can to try to reach out to them. You know, the temptation is to think, oh, someone else is handling. Oh, they're probably just fine. Oh, I don't want to impose. Well, those are all great excuses for what I think is an inspiration from the Holy Spirit for you to be the healing power of Jesus here and now in this world. So cut the excuses, listen to the Holy Spirit, be obedient, and, and reach out to others. Maybe as a family, you know someone who's lonely or isolated. Maybe you get your kids involved. Maybe they could write a nice letter to that person or draw a picture or something like that. It would make their day. And so the whole idea is families start reaching out to other families to help them in their time of need. So prayer, you know, reclaiming the Sabbath, families reaching out to families. These are great ways of, of putting Christ back in the center of your marriage and of your family, which is going to bring nothing but, but more peace and joy to your life. So let's go to Mother Mary. She's the queen of the family. Let's go to St. Joseph, the pillar of the family. Let's ask them to intercede for us and for all marriages and all families.